We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sportsnet. Our stop today is Lindsborg, Kansas, as we get to visit with the new head coach of the Bethany Swedes, Coach Mike Grossner. Coach, a long time in the business, but your first season back home with Bethany. Congratulations on the new opportunity. Uh, thank you, Joey. Appreciate you having me on. Uh, yeah, it's great to be back uh, 35 years later. Uh, <laughs> I played here in 86, 87, got my First coaching opportunity from Coach Kessinger, Hall of Fame coach, uh, in 88. Was able to start my career here and then moved on to Fort Hayes as a GA. But uh, to be back here and see Coach every Tuesday at a quarterback club meeting and uh, Coach Sambo's there. He was my offensive coordinator, a fantastic coach that, uh, you know, taught me everything as far as getting going and kind of ideas and of course, offensive football. So it, it's it's surreal to be back and able to 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 be with these guys. In fact, I'm playing golf uh, later today with Coach K and Coach Sambo and one of our boosters, an old quarterback, Steve Walter. So it's it's really neat for me and our family to to experience this and be back full circle. Well, that sounds like fun. And and on a warm day in Kansas, I'm sure it will be. <clears throat> the company is fantastic, and and you're definitely. Uh, riding with some big names there and a big name yourself coach because uh, as folks may know anyone who's followed NAI football for a while know that you had quite a stint at Baker as well 15 seasons there uh, three times heart coach of the year and and made an appearance in the NAI championship game too so you're no stranger to the NAI level yeah it's good to be back at the NAI level you know took a three-year stand away uh, had some fun in Europe coaching some pro balls some <clears throat> university ball, running a pub with the family. Uh, but it but it was time to get back to the States and the Midwest where we love it and a chance to be at the NAI level again, uh, restart a program, uh, a traditionally great program in Bethany College. I was able to do that at Baker University as well. When I took that job in 04, they were a little bit down. And uh, once we got it rolling by 08, we got to the playoffs. And then after that, I uh, had a pretty good run at it. Thought we'd get one in 16 national championship. Uh, it was a dream season and uh, we just fell short, but uh, it was a great run and, and had a lot of great memories there. And uh, a lot of my old staff is still around uh, at Baker and doing a good job. Well, Coach, then obviously you you do have a game plan. You know how this works and being able to turn things around. Bethany, last season, 0-11, and, and it, it has been a while since the, the program has gotten things a direction. I know that you want to take them right now, but you were named back in 2022 the new head coach, so you've had time to be through the recruiting process. Tell us a little bit about that and how the spring went. Yeah, yeah, there, we're, we've actually lost 22 straight. I want to be real transparent. Um, <laughs> you know, there's been some some crazy things going on as far as coaching changes and late interim coaches. Uh, I was able to 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 accept the job mid November. I jumped on a plane, flew straight to Phoenix, saw my family, tried to get uh, organized a little bit directly to Brophy Prep High School. There was a there was an old uh, coach, Jason Jewell. He played for me at the JUCO back in the 90s. Uh, great coach now. Uh, he's the head coach of Brophy Prep. Very good school, very good football school. Kids are uh, there, you know, as a private high school, ready to go and, and uh, play college football. Was able to talk to a few there. The first day back, uh, I landed, I think, is going to be an all-American type nose guard, David Sweetman, uh, from there. I worked on him, and we finally got him uh, in uh, March. So it was uh, quite a quite a recruiting coup as far as uh, keeping on top of him and, and talking him into coming here to Kansas. Um, so I, I went on the road right away, recruited, got here uh, probably right before Christmas time. Time enough to meet with the players that are here which I thought was real important before they went home for the break for them to get to meet me. We didn't have a team meeting. Um, I kind of had a Zoom team meeting. It was very awkward uh, from, from overseas. It was one of those deals where 
I didn't have a whole team in front of me. There was just pictures of guys in dorms <laughs> asking me questions. And so I did, I got a decent feel, but I really didn't know who I was talking to uh, for the most part. So my big goal was to get back here and interview and let them interview me for about 15 minutes a piece and, and find out where they're from and why they're here and what their goals were. And it was very beneficial uh, out of, there was uh, 60 plus that were around in the spring. And I was able to talk to probably 95% of them. Um, and I think that was a good start. So then we went on Christmas holiday. When we came back, we still had 60 plus, which is a good thing because it was real easy for these guys to jump in that transfer portal and, and look elsewhere. Uh, so I was appreciative of that. Didn't have a first team meeting until mid January because uh, we were out recruiting. And so that first team meeting was the first time they really got to get a feel for my philosophies. By then I had hired some staff. Uh, I kept four staff members from the old staff. Um, I kept the interim head coach, uh, Vincent Grigsby. Hmm. I kept uh, our, our defensive back coach, Coach Chandler. I kept our linebacker coach, Coach Williams. And I, I kept uh, Coach Martin, our wide receiver coach. And the reason I did, I interviewed those guys as well, but they were all alums except for Coach Grigsby. But I, I really analyzed what he went through last year as the interim coach, you know, given the job a week before the season. Yeah. Um, I was able to watch live at about three in the morning from uh, England, some of the games. And so I was just kind of watching body language. And uh, I noticed in the last game, there was a little scuffle on the sideline and it was on the Bethany sideline and the kids reacted well. Uh, and coach addressed it right there, brought them up, talked to them, uh, was upset. And I, I was impressed by that. That kind of stuck in my brain. Hey, these kids are playing for him. Uh, they respect him. And he's got something here that, that I want to I want to get to meet and, and see what he's about. Uh, it's really hard in this in this profession to to keep uh, former staff members. It, it's usually the philosophy is, you know, bring in your guys, clean house and start new. And so I, this was kind of one of those opportunities. I really felt strong about the alums, you know, that they were alums and they take great pride in this transition. Um, and it's been great. I brought in three guys from Baker, former players, guys that played for me in, in Europe, got their masters. I was able to watch them coach, watch them continue their careers uh, playing, get to know them better. Uh, so I brought in uh, uh, Josh Seibert is our defensive coordinator strength coach. He was a Lawrence High guy, played for me for four years at Baker. I coached his brother for four years as well, so I know the family. Uh, brought in Newt Holden. Both of these guys played on our 16 national champ championship contending team. Uh, he was our center. He was a Mill Valley guy. Uh, undersized center, came in as a fullback. We beefed him up, and uh, he ended up starting at center for us in the national title game. He's coaching our running backs, tight ends, um, and working in our, our strength program with Josh, their best buddies. I uh, was able to keep uh, Bruce Young. He's a longtime Missouri high school coach, uh, was a head coach at Avila for four years. So I faced him, and then I got him out of retirement and hired him at Baker. He coached for me for 10 years. Um, he's my senior administrative assistant. He's, he's kind of that guy that does it all. Um, he sat in his seat, so he understands it. But the big thing is, too, He's retired, so he's got a place in Florida he uh, goes to and spends most of the spring. So he's my main Florida recruiter. And then the rest of the year, he's in Missouri most of the time. So he helps me with the Missouri connection because most of the coaches in Missouri, high school coaches, either played for him or coached with him. So he's he's been a nice glue uh, to help these younger coaches as well as be out there and put our name out there. 
So, you know, that's part of the transition. It's tough, Joey. You, you take it over, you jump into the recruiting, but you're also trying to hire the right staff and the right fit and get it to all mesh, like you said, for spring football. And, uh, you know, we weren't going to know how it was going to mesh till we got on the field. We got lucky. We got out there uh, late March, early April. Uh, we were able to have eight practices, and that's kind of all I wanted. I just wanted – an evaluation of who I had and where we, what we needed to bring in. And boy, where we started in January with the weight program, the, the kids bought in. You could see it. You could see the buy-in. Their body language was good. We're really young. We only have one senior. Um, we inherited three seniors from campus that walked on. Uh, so it, I mean, we are young, which is a good thing. Uh, they weren't walking around with their heads down. They weren't, whoa, me, you know, uh, that kind of loser attitude. I, I, I felt like there was energy. And then when we got on the field for spring football, I loved it. Um, you know, we had some really good players uh, that I'm counting on, and we had some holes to fill. And so it gave us eight practices to really evaluate what we had, what we're bringing in and how hard we still had to recruit. We are still recruiting. We had a <laughs> kid on campus yesterday from Texas that signed an offensive lineman. We've, we've got two or three here next week. Um, so we're, we're still hot and heavy there. We have signed 60 kids in this recruiting class. Our retention is at, a, at about 55 right now from, from the 60 plus I had in the spring. Um, so we've got a roster about 115 right now, uh, which, which is kind of the magic number I've always used about 110 to 120 at this level. Um, so feeling good. Um, uh, we lost a young man to the portal. He was, he's a great player, wide receiver. He, he got an offer at South Florida. Uh, that's how good he was. Um, so that was a big hit. Uh, after spring ball, he was just homesick and decided, you know, he's from Miami and, um, I understood, you know, um, so I had to regroup a little offensively after spring because of a couple of hits, but really I feel good in, in a lot of ways, uh, at a lot of positions. And I'm sure we'll talk about that. Well, coach, I listen, I, uh, we're recording this on June 23rd, so you're still signing players as late as yeah. June 22nd. That really is amazing. It's, it's a testament to where we are here in 2023. We're speaking now with Coach Mike Grossner here on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel and please continue to enjoy the videos here. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Talking about Bethany football, which looks to be on the right track to make a turnaround under Coach Grosner. And uh, tell us a little bit then uh, about some of the uh, the players. Let's let's go to the offense first as as we preview this upcoming season. Yeah, uh, some of the the guys after spring ball and the evaluation. Um, you know, I'm coaching the quarterbacks and, and calling the offense, so I work with the quarterbacks. Uh, and we've got a guy here that's six six, two hundred and fifty pounds. And he's athletic. He can move. His, his name is Peyton Manolfe, and uh, he's a kid out of Florida. Um, Palm Coast was an all-star there. Uh, so I really, before spring ball, went back and looked at his high school tape. Uh, he didn't have much tape here. He played spot duty last year, uh, got a concussion, and was out a few games. Um but what I saw on his high school tape, he stood in there and threw the football. And uh, at 6'6", 250, he can stand in there and take a hit. And he sees the field. Very bright student, financial advisor type kid, accountant. Um, so I got to know him pretty well. We had a couple of other young quarterbacks that, that progressed uh, in the spring. Justin Rodriguez, the kid out of Texas that played a little bit last year. Uh probably landed the number two spot out of spring. And uh, and then we have a, another young man that, that Johnny Mass that hasn't played a lot of football, but but he got him, he got better in our system. So I feel really good at that uh, position. But we landed a young man out of Texas named Landry Shields, just south of Dallas, 
uh, I think it's Claiborne, uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, high school, 6'2", 200. And I put on his tape, and I really didn't know his measurables. And he played 5'10-ish, you know, because he, he's running around the field and throwing from all angles and, and making all the throws. And then afterward, I looked at his measurables, and I said, holy cow, this kid's special. I thought he was a 1AA type kid, but we, we got on him early. Uh, the former staff was on him, and then we brought him in, and he committed. Uh, and he's gonna he's gonna be really good. Uh, so we're we're excited about that position. We we landed a young man out of uh, Rock Creek in Manhattan, Dalton Whitworth. Uh, they had a great season. I think they were 11 and one, 12 and one. But he threw for 38 touchdowns and 3,400 yards his senior year. Uh, and he, I mean, he's. He's one of those guys, they spread the field and, and he gets the ball out quick. He's He doesn't have an outstanding arm, but it was kind of like me. I had a little pea shooter, but I got the ball out there and uh, took the hit and, and hopefully they'd catch it. And I, I like what he does. So I really feel good about that position now and in the future. Uh, Peyton, the kid I spoke about, the big kid, he's a redshirt sophomore. So we're still young, but I, we've got talent. Um, the old line really came around. Coach Coach Grigsby, the former coach, is our old line coach with Coach Clatterbuck. I hired out of Salina South, but we go back to Arizona together as coaches. Um, so I have two offensive line coaches, and we brought in. Uh, we we went through the spring with about twelve bodies, and we brought in nine more bodies in this recruiting class. And I, I'm telling you, it's it has come together. Each position, we've got depth. Uh, I'm a little worried about the center position and not that we don't have the guys with ability. It's just snapping the ball between their legs and make sure it gets there, <clears throat> which is a, is an art with all the shotgun stuff that goes on these days. So um, I feel good there. Tight ends. We, we converted two guys over from DNs in the spring and it went well. Joe Frazier and Mitch McFall came over and they played really well. We signed two to three other tight ends. So I feel pretty good. <clears throat> tight ends real important in what we do. Um, <clears throat> it's it it uh, is a way to balance up a defense and run the football and and throw off of it. So uh, that's a position that that I feel like we can still get better recruiting wise and and hopefully find some guys next year. Uh, running back, we lost JJ Allen, who I thought was really special. The Chiefs were taking a peek at him. Uh, he academically was a casualty. Um, hopefully we get him back the following year. So we, we went out and really, once we knew that we were, went after some guys and we landed four guys over 200 pounds, which JJ was 225 pounds and could pound it in there and could run. Um, so we feel good there. They're going to be freshmen. And then we, we landed a couple scat backs out of Texas, the Dallas Houston area. Camden Morgan and uh, the Bond Love Lady, both of them exciting kids. They're about 5'8", 160, but they can do some things with the ball in their hands. So I like our mixture there. We're just going to be real young, so we just got to be mistake-free, I think, is is the key there. Uh, wide out, uh, we're, we're piecing it together. Um, we have some outstanding inside slot type kids and I'm still looking for that big body outside that you can throw to in a one-on-one -on -one situation. So uh, I like I like where we're at offensively. I think we can line up right away and play. Defensively, it was more of an off-the-field grade. And can we get the grades done in the spring? Uh, and we did. A lot of guys that we were counting on <clears throat> came through and uh, did well in the classroom. So I feel pretty good there. We're we're going to be an exciting defense. We're going to be aggressive. Um, so we got to be sound in the, in the defensive backfield behind. And I feel like we've got the pieces. I, I felt like we were really lacking out of spring <clears throat> our defensive front. Uh, we, to me, you know, as I went through the NAI progression at Baker and, uh, through the years, I felt we got better and better up front and that it eventually, you know, played for a national championship for that reason. Um, and I think we're 
maybe slightly behind on the D line, size wise, speed wise, athleticism. Uh, but I felt like recruiting, we we pieced some guys together, especially inside. And I think we made improvement there in our recruiting class. So hopefully we can put something together up front. I like our linebackers and I like our secondary. Uh, but uh, I, I, I think we could be pretty good if we piece it together. Sounds like camp should be a lot of fun. Yeah. With, and, with all that. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, you know, I, as, I remember as a young coach, you're trying to please, you're trying to get to know your guys. You don't have that time anymore. So we arrive, you know, our first practice will be August 7th. Um, and we got a game August 26th, less than three weeks later. And, and we don't do a lot of two-a-days. I'm not a big believer in crushing them because it's hard to get the legs back too. Um so we'll spend that first week two a days, and then we'll we'll probably break it off by Saturday of the first week, and then kind of get into game mode. Um, <clears throat> so I really stress with with our young coaches is we we should have utilized the spring to evaluate our guys here. Those eight practices were their interview. Uh, you know what they can do. Now when we get to fall, if you have any question marks. Insert a young guy. <laughs> I mean, go with it. If you think he's got ability, put him in there, and that might make the older guys step up. Uh, if not, that the young guy's the right guy in that position. But but we, you don't have a lot of time to experiment. It's, you know, don't make the mistake. I always tell them, don't play the wrong guy in the first game, just because, you know, it's your job as a coach to to analyze, watch tape, evaluate every second that guy's with you in camp. And by game week, we better have the right guys in as, as starters and, and know who our depth is. Coach, you uh, – and I've learned so much. I appreciate that. You you alluded to the fact that uh, you were in Europe prior to coming back to Lindsborg, and, and I just wanted to, to mention that briefly because that, that's a, a great story. You bring so much to the table anyway from the NAI level, but you've coached it at other levels than that, and most recently you spent time in England with the Leicester Falcons, and you're talking about uh, running a pub while you're there doing that. Tell us a little bit about that and, and yeah. uh, just what that was like. Yeah, it's it goes full circle. It's kind of like the Bethany story. I, I played over there. Um, in Nottingham, which is a town, rival town with Leicester, um, back in 90 through 92. And then I spent one season in Italy in 93. Um, so when I was in England back in 90, a teammate of mine, Guy Kersey, he was an 18 year old on our junior team. Um, he became 30 plus years later, the owner of the Leicester Falcons. And he also was in the pub business. Well, my last year at, at Baker in 18, he got a hold of me and wanted to recruit some of our players. So we put together a pathway for our guys to go get a master's in one year at, at their prestigious universities there, play for the Falcons and play for the university. So basically two seasons in one, and have a great experience. And so I sent five or six of my Baker guys that first year over with them. And uh, they had a great experience. And he brought his staff prior to those guys going over in the 18 season to shadow us. Uh, a lot of those guys were my former teammates in the 90s. So they came over to Baldwin City. We were playing Missouri Valley that week. And, and I let them jump into meetings on the practice field, roam the field, get up weight room, get all the experience they could as a coach. And uh, we had a blast and I was nervous because, you know, you know, that could be a distraction. Uh, but we had a great game uh, against Missouri Valley, beat them 72 nothing or something like that, which is crazy because Mo Valley's a fantastic school. Um but it, but it was just came together as a great week. They went home, and uh, the owner got a hold of me, and he kind of – we were talking, and I half-jokingly said, hey, 
put something together with a pub or something, and I'll come coach over there. And he, <laughs> he said, give me a day. And lo and behold, the next day, uh, he, he had a thing put together and a, a contract, and we kind of went over, took a trip over, me and my wife, and uh, looked at everything. We actually worked in the pub to see if we really wanted to do it. Uh, we both enjoyed it. It was over uh, Christmas, right before COVID. And so we left England to come home for Christmas to put everything together and, and go back and COVID hit. Uh, but I did accept the job. We had looked at a pub. I wanted to work a traditional English pub. I didn't want a restaurant. I mean, what you think of is what we what we got. We, we, we purchased a pub uh, in a town called Hathern, right outside of Loughborough, which is a sports town. The Loughborough University is, is the epitome of a sports university. It's where all their Olympic, Olympic athletes train. Uh, it's now where the NFL Academy is. So we were two miles from that university. And uh, the dew drop in was the pub. And we lived upstairs. I brought the whole family initially. Uh, my 21-year-old, now 22-year-old son was my main bartender. Uh, um, my wife was the chef. She got chef training. We brought American food uh, to the pub. That's all we served. So it was kind of a unique, uh, you know, that we had to, I guess, grow on them. You know, the English people are pretty set in their ways. Uh, I became a brewmaster type guy. I uh, had to learn the whole system. We served a Guinness, uh, which is, they're very particular. If you don't serve it right, you can't serve it. So I had to pass a seven step and got my certification, which I'm very proud of. Uh, but they would come test it and, and make sure it was of quality. So in the end, we spent three years. Um, I took over a Leicester Falcon team that was kind of down. Are you there? I'm still here. Okay, I lost the picture. Okay. And uh, my my second year there, we went 11 and 0, and we're a national semifinalist. Uh, so it, so it was awesome, you know. And and we finished strong there, and had a great experience as a family. Coach, this has been a lot of fun. I have uh, I've learned a lot. What a great adventure that absolutely was. Had to be. I mean, so much fun in that. And thanks for sharing it. Thanks for taking the time to share it with us. So let's look really quickly then. August 26th, and you'll have just, you know, less than three weeks from when camp starts. Season gets underway as you're at home, and the folks there in Lindsborg will get an opportunity to see you the first week of the season. Avila comes to town, Avila with the new head coach as well. And then you go on the road to take on Kansas Wesleyan, the KCAC, with 12 teams this year, two divisional play. So talk a little bit about the schedule. Yeah, uh, I, I like the fact we're at home. Uh, Avila's uh, I'm, I'm, I understand that they were in my old league. Uh, so I, I faced them for quite a few years. So, uh, they won't be a big mystery other than they had a coaching change. Uh, Mark Benavidez did a great job there, won the conference mm -hmm. championship last year, and then took the head job at William, William Penn in, in the heart. So with that, they're in transition, just like us. There'll be some mystery, uh, but I also believe they've got some culture there that, that they've established. Uh, they brought in a, an ex-chief, uh, Kansas City Chief, to be their head coach. Uh, he's, he's a great coach. So I, I think it'll be a great matchup. Uh, we got them at home, uh, which hopefully is an advantage here. Uh, we're, we're doing a stadium renovation right now that's going to be beautiful. It's, it's for our old coach, Ted Kessinger. It's called the Kessinger Family Stadium. Uh, I look out my window right now and, and see them working hard to get it ready. I'm not sure it'll be ready by the season, but we're going to play here, uh, you know, and, and they'll continue to work on it. But uh, it's going to be beautiful. And then second week, we uh, head to Kansas Wesleyan. Uh, that's the rival. That's that's the school we didn't lose to back in the day. And uh, they've been traditionally very, very good. Uh, lately and and uh, have it going up there so that's that's going to be a big challenge uh, but the but the rivalry should take care of itself and our guys should be ready 
And then, uh, you know, we jump into the, we're breaking our division into two divisions this year with 12 opponents uh, or 12 conference uh, opponents. So Evangel has joined our league, which they were in the heart of America. So I'm familiar with them. Uh, they're very good, uh, solid, physical, uh, year in and year out. You had to go beat them. They weren't going to beat themselves. And so uh, they're going to be they're going to be somebody to contend with in this league. Uh, we play them, I think, our opener of the division play. So we're doing it very similar to what we did in the heart. The first five to six games, I think the first six are are within the whole conference but they're not division games and then the back half will have a buy and then the back half of the season is conference games which count towards the playoffs and so i i like this format we we kind of transitioned to it in the heart when we got 12 teams and what it allows is you, you still got to win them all because you're still ranked throughout the year um, but that back half of the season if you can win the conference and still be ranked in the top 20 in the nation, you got an automatic bid. And so each year in the heart, we had for sure two going, maybe a third, uh, which was nice. And they've expanded this year. I don't know if you know, Joe, they expanded to 20 teams going to the playoffs, which I loved. I had fought for that uh, for 15 years when I was in the heart because I, I felt like there were – Team 16 through 20 were very similar to 10 through 16. And I felt like, you know, the MIAA and the, and the Division II had gone to a 24-team format. And it was successful because you can play that first. You can give the top eight a uh, reward and give them a bye in the first round and play a really good regional matchup where fans will come see it. And so that's what we're, we're going to do. Um, and so I, I think it'll be more exciting, uh, more opportunity for more teams to get in. Uh, and the way our conference is split, there should be two coming from our uh, uh, KCAC. Uh, it was neat. I, I just heard yesterday, our, I think it's our side, of, for sure, our side of the conference is going to be named after Coach Kessinger. And then there's another coach on the other side that they'll name that that half of the conference. So I, I think it brings new excitement. Um, it's a difficult league. I've been watching this conference, and they are on the way up. You can see it last year when they got to the playoffs; they performed well. Um, so I, I, you know, you the the beauty of the NAI is. And, and when I was in the heart in the KCAC, now you better show up every week or you'll get beat. Doesn't matter who you're playing. Yeah. And then you're right. It, it is definitely a conference on the move that is trending upward. And the Bethany Swedes now look to be in a position to be a part of that trend upward. Nowhere to go from up, then, then up from here, though, Coach, as you yeah. mentioned from the outset. And uh, I appreciate visiting with you today. Uh, great adventure. You're coming and in- into Lindsborg off of that, and it looks like it's going to be a fantastic adventure for you in 2023. Coach Mike Groster, a new head coach for the Bethany Swedes, no stranger to Lindsborg though at all. Thank you so much for taking time with us today, sharing with us all about that, and we definitely will be watching the Swedes this season. Appreciate it, Joey. I, I really do. I appreciate you talking about our conference, our, our program, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun year, and I appreciate what you guys do covering NAI sports. Thank you, sir.